Hi again, this is episode number 785. And the topic today is, if they say, sorry, they say it is done unto you as you believe. If so, what have you been, been believing? So I jump into this in more detail because I have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about, including my own experience, which is, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> Before I do, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. And a little bit schwitzy because I was out bike riding and I didn't call down enough before I started this, but I want to keep my commitment at 5 p.m. to do my live broadcast. And by the way, this is a Facebook Live in case you're watching on YouTube. That's where it started. And I'll tell you all about that at the back end. So hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my daily broadcast. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business, and occasionally for men who want to give them help. But reality is I'm, I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is what inspired my work and also inspires these talks I do every day called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. Although, frankly, I probably should take, change the title because these talks are for everybody nowadays. They're not generally towards women only. But more women tend to watch than men do, so I can't control my audience that way. So today we're going to talk a little bit metaphysical, um, maybe even spiritual, even this Friday. I know it's not weekend yet, but what came up. So there's a quote in the Bible, and it's something that's banded around a lot in the spiritual community, which is, it is done unto you as you believe. And so I said, if so, what have you been doing? Or what have you been believing? So again, this is episode number 785, and I'll tell you at the back end of the broadcast, when you find the other 784 <laughs> broadcasts. So before I, but before that, let me talk about the, let me get to the topic. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me jump into the meat of the conversation or the talk. And by the way, because this is Facebook Live, interaction is welcomed. Um, if you're watching in replay or watching on YouTube, you can certainly comment about what I'm saying and I'll respond later on. That's the preamble. Okay, topic. So, is done unto you as you believe? Now, I've hated hearing that a lot, just to be transparent. It's been said in the communities I belong to a lot of times, and part of me goes, I don't want to believe that, you know, because it's done unto you as you believe. So I didn't want to believe it, so maybe it wasn't done to me as my belief. But the thing about it is, I mean, it, it, truth be said, it is done unto you to believe is really another way of saying the law of attraction works. Based on experience, and I'm to my own experience here, and you may can reflect on your own as well, I've certainly noticed how when I let go and have, and have an intention for certain things, they show up. I had two instances today where I was out in the world, I was bike riding, as I said earlier, so I'm a, bit, a little bit schwitzy from riding. I had an intention to meet a couple of people who I, like where they were. And the first one was there, and I went and talked to them, it was great. The second one, was a total coincidence because I didn't I, I was just having to stop by and I thought I wonder if she's here today and she was so we got to talk for a little bit which is wonderful but see that was the detached um, intention and also in a sense believing the possibility because it, say, the saying it's done as you as believe sorry it's done as you as you believe isn't necessarily that it's done to you as you believe firmly and hold on with both hands and you grip it and grasp it and believe it for months and months and months no it's done unto you as you believe, even if you just believe in a possibility. So this takes the pressure off, first of all. The thing about it also, and this is the downside of it, is that there's no discrimination, or it's indiscriminate, how the way the, the universe, the world, the environment you live in, responds to your beliefs. If you believe something good's gonna happen, it tends to go that direction. If you believe something bad's gonna happen, it'll tend to go that direction. Done unto you as you believe means if you believe good or bad, it will be done unto you accordingly. It's, it, let me say this way. <laughs> I was going to have a pet peeve with this. Kind of, sort of. I do have a certain um, dis, not, not distress, but experience. Let me just say it this way. I've had some experiences where it's come true in the negative sense for me, and that sucked. And I am still, in some cases, working on stuff because I'm, hey, I'm still on the planet, and as, as um, Richard Buck wrote in Illusions, he was, quote, he, he, the, he was quoted, or he quoted in there, this, that um, there's a way to discover if your mission on Earth is finished. If you're still here, it isn't. And because I'm still on the planet, as we all are, if you're watching this, you are on the planet, then it's something, there's always something to work on. Let's put it that way. It's like cruising along isn't really part of the, the game, especially if you're starting to do this work where you're developing yourself and growing and learning. There are more and more opportunities every day to evolve and grow. And certainly to respond perhaps differently than you have in the past. I have been triggered today already by some of the news articles I've read. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to avoid doing that sometimes on a Friday, especially, but other days too. So again, don't as you believe, 
sometimes it's challenging because you, th you think you believe in something, but something else keeps showing up. See, this is a feedback mechanism, and this is the thing about it. What I want to get to about this is done Jesus believes, so what have you been believing? The reality you live in is what you've been believing. Let me say that one again so you get a sense of it. If it is done unto you as you believe, then what you've been believing has been showing up in your life. Part of you, some of you are going to go, oh, great, wonderful. And some of you go, oh, crap. It could be either one or both. Because the thing is, your life is, an, 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 as, um, in spiritual terms, an outpicturing, an expression, a um, pouring forth of what you've been holding on inside. So if you believe that you'll never find the one you'll want to, you'll never find real love, the other likely you won't find it. If you believe that money's hard to come by, or the right jobs hard to come by, there aren't any good, there aren't any good jobs out there, or women, if you believe that there are no good men out there, it's quite likely you're not going to meet any. I'm not saying there aren't any good men out there, but in your environment, in your view, where you're going in your life, you may not meet that many because they don't fit your belief system. And it's not like they're going to go, oh, I don't want to talk to her. It's going to be the fact that they just don't show up. You don't see them. In fact, they could, in, they could even be, in, I believe, now this is my belief, <laughs> belief upon belief upon belief. If you believe, ladies, if, if the ladies are watching, if you believe that there's no good ones out there, no good men out there, one could be standing in front of you and you won't even see them. At least you won't see them as, a, as approachable or as attractive. You'll be attracted to, okay, let me break it down this way. I'm seeing how it comes through now. All right. So let me rewind slightly. So, to the ladies, and men, you can do the reverse of this if you want so desire. So, ladies, if you have a belief, let me speak to one person in particular. Hi. <laughs> if you believe there are no good men out there, then what you will be attracted to and drawn to is anything but a good man. Because your belief overrides your awareness, so to speak. You might meet good men, but you won't be attracted to them. They might be your best friends, they might be co-workers, they might be people you bump into in the store. But you won't be attracted to them because your belief is there's no good men out there for you to be in a relationship with. For the men, it's the reverse of that. You've got no, no good women out there, or there's no ideal women, or whatever that is. So you won't meet that. So what happens is you'll be drawn to things that don't match, sorry, things that affirm what you believe. So if you believe that this is not the case, you're going to be drawn to what isn't the case. This is pivotal, especially around relationships, because so many people carry this framing of their relationship experience that it's going to be a certain way, and it keeps showing up that way. Now, you may be trying to convince yourself that you'll find the perfect partner, but the reality is, again, because it's done into you as you believe, and what you see in your experience is your belief outpicturing. If you ain't getting that, that's a clue that maybe your beliefs aren't on track, that maybe the belief you're holding for what you really want isn't aligned to your true core beliefs. This is the thing I'm going to go deeper on. It's easy to say, I believe in success, I believe in prosperity, I believe I'm going to have lots of money, I believe in a great relationship. You can say all that stuff, but it's kind of like um, skimming stones on the surface of the lake. It's not the lake itself. The depth of the lake contains, and it's an interesting metaphor, the depth of the lake contains your deep, deeply held beliefs. If those beliefs don't match what you're thinking on top, you want to have this, this, and this be a certain way, then what you're going to get as a result is going to match what's in the depths, not what's on the surface. This is basically your brain here. We're talking about your mind, your consciousness. Those beliefs are deeply entrenched in your consciousness because they've been entrenched over many, many, many years. Before you panic, I have an answer in a moment, so stay with, stick with me. <laughs> I know sometimes I'm going to go like, okay, how do I say this in a way that doesn't scare people off? The choice points we have is to first become aware. I've talked about it so many times before about awareness is, first, is the first step and awareness is key. And I've also said some time ago that awareness is often curative. In this case, it might be, but I'm not going to promise. When you are willing to look at your own experience and what's happening in your relationship experience, for example, and this can be true, true for money as well or for career, or for housing, or for um, family dynamics. It could be any of those things. But let's choose, I'm using relationship as a model because that's the area I focus on primarily. If you choose to look clinically, clearly, and humbly at your relationship experience and your past history, track record of relationships, it's quite possible you'll see 
um, commonality, a certain thread through all of them that line up where it's the same sort of thing. They may, not, they may be very di different people every time, but something about them is in common, not just their gender, <laughs> but maybe the way they treated you or the way they treated themselves or the way you interacted. It was something on that level that will tend to repeat again and again and again in every relationship. That is the seed, that is the um, indicator of a belief you've been running inside yourself forever. The good news is when you start looking back at your past relationships and see those common threads, you've got, you've got like, um, so you're like you, you, you've grasped the, no, that, that's a bad analogy, I won't use that. Like tiger by the tail, that's not a good analogy. But, you <laughs> but when you start to see, again, awareness is the first step, where you have experienced the same thing again and again in past relationships, and you're aware that, some, that you participated in making that happen, because that's another part too, is taking responsibility. Being aware, taking responsibility, and then, this is the, this is the, this is the difficult part for some people, because it's not an easy thing to do, is you go back to where that started, you dig, a you dig down to the first time that, that belief was installed, and you change it. Now, I'm saying that very simply, but that's actually more of the work I do in my coaching, so I'm not gonna give you the, it's not, an e it's, I'm trying to show you it, share it with you. Simply put, your younger internal self, call it inner child, whatever you wanna call it, has taken on, or did take on when you were younger, three, four, five, six years old, a whole slew of, a, a compendium of beliefs about things, including love and relationships and every other area too. So oftentimes as an adult, just to put just a sidebar slightly, if you are someone who's noticed that money doesn't work the way you want it to in your life, it's quite possible that you learn something when you're a kid from your parents with money, that's the way you run your adult money experience now. I'm not gonna go down that path right now, but that's kind of a, another way to look at things as being what you learned when you were younger, that you send, tend to make the law in your life as an adult. So sticking back to relationship. So at a younger point in your life, there was an experience or multiple experiences or a range of life that you experienced a certain way of being between your parents or between your parents and yourself. That experience gets embedded. That um, observation that you had when you witnessed or saw things happening the way your parent, either one of your parents treated you or the other parent or both, how they treated each other, how they talked to each other, any of these things. And you may be getting an awareness by now because this is, this is fundamental. When you become aware of what it was that you had as a child in your parents' experience that you took on as a belief, you wouldn't have done it necessarily consciously, but you as a young three, four, five-year-old were looking at the world going, wow, that's how the world works on some level. And so you look at your parents particularly, or the adults around you, because it could be, you may have been staying with grandparents or uncles, whatever it was. Those adults modeled by expression, by being, by how they talk to each other, how they talk, talk to you, how they treat each other, et cetera, et cetera. They modeled how relationships are done. Because you didn't have a, a user's manual when you came in and you didn't get one from your parents, you took that as the law. You took that as the belief of what's true. You believe that's the way it was. So as a child, you basically took that belief of that Im image and you wrapped it up and stuck it inside and carried it ever since. Your adult life is a reflection of that. And for 99% of the people, you may be the exception, but you may be one of the 99%, most likely. Your adult relationships, if you look close enough and you look for certain threads, you'll notice some commonality with what happened when you were a child. The beliefs you took on because of what you saw, observed and witnessed and experienced with your parents has become the law of the land for you as an adult. And your adult relationships may have been amazing or may have suffered because of that. And I mean, I, I look at my, my, my parents' relationship just to be totally transparent. And one of the things about my parents' relationship was, which is, let, me, let me go way around. My early dating life, let's start there and go back because I had to start with what it was current. So I'm showing you how I did it. So you know how to do it too. As a young adult, my early dating experience for the first few years of my adult life, which were relationships were short-lived. They would start and we'd get together, have a nice little time, connection, wonderful, blah, 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 blah. There'd be an argument and I'd leave. This happened frequently, several over the period of five, six years. 
And I thought that's what I thought was the way it was. Now, I didn't realize that what I was doing was bailing because I was the one that called it off. I quit. I, we had, there was an argument between me and, and my girlfriend. I'd leave. Didn't come back. It was over completely. That was it. Nailing the coffin. Done. When I was, had a chance to look back at my upbringing, I, I realized something that was profound and simple in some ways. I remember as a child, my parents never argued in front of me or my brother. They may have argued, but not that I'm aware of. Now, of course, this is also my memory, which may be at fault, just, you know, just say. But my looking back, when I did some digger, deeper, deeper, dig, deeper digging, I got to see my parents' relationship and they never argued, which sounds so wonderful. Here's the problem. I didn't have any skills or tools when I was an adult of how to have an argument and not run away. Because that's what I did. I thought, because my parents never argued, over, or, and they had long, my parents were together 60 years, I believed that you couldn't be in a relationship if there were arguments based on the fact that in my parents' relationship there weren't any arguments. You know, relationship, no arguments, no arguments, relationship. So I was, as an adult, looking for a relationship where there would never be any arguments. Fat chance, that was. But the reality I experienced as an adult was that I didn't have one, I didn't have the tools to work with to, ha to deal with arguments, and two, I believe that arguments and love didn't go together because my parents modeled that for me without realizing it. And that's the thing. Don't blame your parents, by the way. You may be aware of this, looking back at your childhood, going, oh, my parents did that, that, and that. Your parents did the best they could, ideally. And so to judge or blame your parents to what's been in the way and what's not working for you, not recommended path. This is to focus on your own accountability, your own responsibility, and your own willingness to look at your life through the lens of how can I change things so I can have more of what I want and forgive yourself, forgive your parents if necessary, all part of the package so you can move on, move forward, move free. For me, when I started rearranging that belief, I found myself, because not, not only in romantic relationships, but every relationship I had, friendships, employment, bosses, all sorts of stuff. If there was an argument, I'd bail because I had the wiring inside that way. It's also one reason why I was at school. I know I, I know I got bullied. Why I got bullied? Excuse me. I know in my teen, teen years why I got bullied at high school, partly because I didn't know how to respond to that. I shut down because and I got bullied because of it. Because I got bullied once, didn't 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 strike back, so I suffered for five more years. That was tied because I didn't have an understanding that you could go through love and have arguments at the same time. I didn't know how to fight back. I didn't know arguing that sort of stuff. Now I got a better talk, better target. Not saying I argue intentionally, but I don't back down, or I don't run away, or I don't shut down, or I don't avoid. I've had relationships where there were arguments, and we got through it because I realized that the relationship was more important, and also because that belief no longer held weight. So as a summary, for you, perhaps, this is something you haven't dealt with yet. Maybe you have an experience where your history has been imprinted on your adult life without you realizing it, and now this talk is giving you the insight to go, oh, crap, that was my life. I, I realize now my parents' relationship, I modeled that. My last three partners did exactly the same thing my dad did or my mom did or whatever that was. This recognition, hi Sue, this recognition is a game changer because when you become aware of the fact that you have in fact opened up the um, hidden chamber of secrets, <laughs> there's the time that you can actually step into a place of changing your future. It sounds backwards, but to change your future, you have to go back in the past. But it's the way it works. Back to the beginning, understanding what it is, change the wiring so as an adult you can change it. In my coaching, there's different things I use with reparenting, parts integration, um, uh, uh, what do you call that stuff? There's a few other things. I don't have the names right now. But this is the thing. You can get this from other people. You can get help with other people because this is pivotal because you can change your future by rewiring your past. So the whole point about, as the title said, it is done in you as you believe, is if you experience it in life the way you want it, keep going. If there's anything that's not working, that's a clue. And by looking back at your past, you can find what it was that started this whole process in the, in the, in the first place, so they can change your current paradigm and change your future because of that. Your future is based upon what you believe. If you don't have good management of your beliefs, you've got to go back to your past. I think I made that clear enough, excuse me. <clears throat> so I hope this made sense. This is kind of the core of my work, so it's what I do. Hi Mary, good to see you. Um, so it's what I talk about a lot in my coaching, but also in, in just my talks. If you haven't seen my talks before, this comes up every so often, so it's back up again. 
Um, so I'm going to put some links in the comments as recommendations. One, a, comp a complimentary chat with me so we can find out more about what's going on for you and get some guidance. Um, I'll throw a couple of things in there just to keep you busy. This is my Facebook Live I do every day, by the way. If you haven't seen me before or haven't seen my talks before, join me at, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Silby, and, we can, and you can interact more easily too. If you're watching the replays, and I've got 784 besides this one, um, on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, please like my page on, on Facebook, and on YouTube, because I do a backup, you never know what's gonna happen with Facebook. You know, gotta have some plans. On YouTube, I have a playlist uh, called Messages for the Masculine on my channel, which is Barry Selby. Please like my channel. Uh, subscribe, rather, that's what it is. YouTube, subscribe, Facebook, like. Yeah, that was the thing. So I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions about this topic, you please feel free to put them below. If you want to reach out to me for support, you can message me, message me over social media. And I will put a link in the comments so you can reach out to me and get some help. What is it you believe? Is your, excuse me. <coughs> Huh, excuse me, I believe I'd get some water in a minute. Um, notice what your life is like now. Notice if it matches what you think you want. Because if you think you want something and you're not getting that, it means your beliefs don't match it. Having alignment, having complementary understanding that your, your life, your beliefs are exactly mirroring each other will give you a clue where there's some work to be done. It, you don't have to suffer through this, you don't have to put up with this. You can change your future but basically rewiring your beliefs in the past. It does work, trust me. I've been through that in my, in my master's program. I learned this whole toolkit, which is why I'm offering it here. Your life is available to be, your life can be magnificent. It's all available to you, but it's about the wiring inside you carry as your beliefs. I think I made my point. Um, that I think is about it for today. This is my daily Facebook Live again, as I mentioned. You can know where to find me, I'll give you the places. Um, I hope you want to get some value from this. If you've got any questions, again, put them below or reach out to me. I'll, I'll offer some support. Yeah, it is done and choose your belief. So what have you been believing? With that, thank you for watching. Thank. You. Oh, hi, Sue. What are you saying? Thank you for helping you work, work through our beliefs to change patterns for a much healthier future. You're very welcome, Sue. I'm, I'm glad I can support you. So I appreciate that. And for everyone who's watching, I hope you get value too. This is my work. It's, it's, it's okay to change. Your beliefs and note have to be in stone if you don't want it to be. And if I can, if you want, if you want some help, I can reach out to me and I can help you. Yeah, that was it. That was in English. <laughs> Just making sure. Okay, so thanks for watching. Thank you for being with me. This is my daily chat, as I mentioned, personal page every day at five p.m. So I'll be back again tomorrow, same time, change, same channel. And my recommendation, my advice every time is to please take care of yourself. This is your life. You can live it the way you want. Enjoy it. Expand it. Celebrate it. Have a great day. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.